bring it back, huh? You got the towels and stuff in there? You know the, uh, the towels and the cotton bottles in Accept the family. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. For I am a stranger with thee. And a sojourner as all my fathers were. Or spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God for a thousand years in thy sight as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night, there is a sleep in the morning, they're like grass, which groweth up in the evening, it is cut down and withereth. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. David wrote, a word to console himself when he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name said, Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me in my Father's house. If it were not so, I would have told you. Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me. No one comes to my Father except by me. Praise ye the Lord. But tell me what do you know the Lord has so much for me. You know he's open. I could I'm going to keep on trusting because, because his word is true. Oh, you know already done. He's already done what he said. Yeah. You know the Lord has the Lord right now anyhow. Thank you, God. We ought to give him a praise huh? We ought to thank him for his goodness and his grace. Oh, yeah. I come to share with you that if this were a funeral I'd understand how you'd feel. If this was the end of the road I'd understand your silence. But since we know where he is, and we know how he lived to get there, we know this is not an end but a coronation and a celebration. We ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Thank him for the life of Brother Pope. We thank him for what he meant, what he will mean. And we thank he gave his life to Christ, which secured his future. We're not worrying about him. We're worrying about us, but we're not worrying about him program has been designated by the family and by us. We will follow the order of service with fidelity. We will follow it as, as outlined. The prayer of comfort shall be given by the Reverend Kathy Simmons, Associate Minister here at the Charity Missionary Baptist Church. Follow with the readings of the Word of God. Old Testament, Minister Earl Gurley, associate here at Charity, and the New Testament, the Reverend Vertel Seabrook, executive minister here at Charity. 
Then there shall be a selection, one that we all know so well. And then I shall come back and present the remarks in that order, please. Amen. Let us bow. What's gracious? And eternal Father, Lord, we come right now. Right now, Lord. Humbly as we know how to, Father, lifting up your name. Oh, Father, as we magnify, glorify, and exalt you. Yes, oh, yes. Father, we ask that you send down your comforter right now, Lord, upon this family, Lord. Give them a peace right now. Give them rest right now, Father. Give them what they have a need of, Lord. Oh, Father, somebody has lost a loved one, Father. Lost a father, lost a grandfather, lost a brother. Oh, Father, you know all about it. Lost a friend, lost a relative, Father. And so, Lord, I ask you right now, Father, to come and touch that family, Lord. Loose your minister and angels right now and come and see about your children. Oh, Father, in your word, you said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Make us me to lie down in the green pastures. Lead us me beside the still waters. Restore us my soul. Lead us me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou appears a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Oh, Father, your word, Father, is what comforts us today, Father. And so, Father, we ask right now, Lord, in the next few days, Lord, that we would read our Bibles, Father. That we might see who you are, Father, and find comfort there, Father. So in the midnight hour, Lord, as we are crying out to your name, Father, you can give us answers, Father. You would give us understanding. You would give us, Lord, wisdom and guidance and direction. Oh, Father, right now in your mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. If you're able to rise to your feet, please do, except for the immediate family, except for the family, for the reading of God's word. I will be reading Psalms 100 in the fifth verse. That's Psalm 100 in the fifth verse. And the Lord's word reads as follows. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. To the family, I hope these words of comfort brings joy to you. In Jesus' name, amen. New Testament reading, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. I'll be reading the New Living Translation. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. This is God's word for God's people. We bless the name of the Lord and may the family find comfort in his words. Amen. 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 Thank you. Why should I feel discouraged? Oh, watch yourself. Watch yourself. And why should the shadow? Should my heart 
feel a little lonely and long for heaven home when Jesus is my portion sing because I'm free. Thank you, Reverend Simmons, for the beautiful prayer of comfort. Minister Gurley for your obedience and reading the word. Reverend Vertel Seabrook for reading the word and for your service unto this family and to this church. We celebrate you. Bless God for the choir and the unique voice of Sister Mary Greer. Give them a hand clap of praise. Our amazing musicians and those singing with uplifted voices, we are grateful. Family has designated those to give remarks. They've also asked me without license to tell you that what they really mean is marks. Not remarks, just marks that you'll make them as brief as humanly possible, that you remember that the family has been through much, Amen. and no matter how much is on your heart, you will not have time to say it all. Amen. We just pray you'll say enough. We'll have uh, Sister Lisa Bess from the Commission of the Blind, all the way from Columbia, Amen. South Carolina, uh, followed by the son, Brother Derek Webb, 
an uncle, Brother Lawrence Pope, another beloved uncle, Brother Talbert Hallback, and Brother Pope's deacon here at Charity, Deacon Timothy Griffin. Sister Bess is not coming. So following the order presented after Sister Best, and then we'll have the resolutions and acknowledgments by Trustee Arika Grant. In that order, please. Hi, right. everybody doing? Doing good. How you doing? Yeah, I want to uh, read this poem. Don't grieve for me, for now I feel free. I followed the plan God laid for me. I saw his face, I heard his call. I took his hand and I left it all. I could not stay another day to love, to laugh, to work or play. Tasks left undone must stay that, stay that way. And if my, part, my partner has left a void, then fill it with remember joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. A yes, these things I too shall miss. My life's been full of I save your much. Good times, good friends, I love once touch. Perhaps my time seems all too brief. Don't shorten your don't shorten yours with undue grief. Be not burdened with tears of sorrow. Enjoy the sunshine of the morrow. Thank you. Brother Lawrence Pope, Brother Hallback, is Brother Pope, is it either one. It is all for God's glory. Amen. 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 Thank God for being here for the spokesman of the Pope family this, this afternoon. When I met my nephew, Derek, uh, my older brother's son, he invited me and my sister one summer to come up to New York to spend the summer. I thought it was a, a good thing. I was really happy about going to New York for the first time. And when I got to New York, we got to his apartment, and I met my niece, Tanya, there, and, and Derek. Derek came out of the room. He was only one year old, and he was about this big. <laughs> I said, my God, he's a big fella for one year old. But get, Derek grew up to be a big guy. Yeah. We started calling him Big Pope, because in my family, most of us are short. But Derek was taller. He was the taller Pope. So we called him Big Pope. Yeah. And so I remember Derek as being a good cook. Just like the, the, I mean, the program says, he was a very good cook. Uh, Derek used to work to Noisy Oyster, I believe, over there on James Island. And then he worked to one on Rivers Avenue. He used to always say, Unc, come over, I got something for you. He would have a tray here, that seafood that he fixed up. He was a very good cook, and, and I thank Derek. I, I'm going to miss the cooking that, 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 that Derek, that Derek uh, used to cook. Yeah, he did a real good job, and I thank God. But not there, but when me and Derek started inviting each other to church, he invited me here at Charity one time. I don't know if they all remember, but they had a speaker from Dallas, Texas one time. And um, I tell you, me and my wife, we really enjoyed that service, um, Pastor. The guy was from um, Dallas, Texas, I remember. And um, we was right here in Charity. And then I invited him to my church, uh, Miracle Temple Church. 
And we used to have a good time, you know, conversing back and forth about how good God is and what God done for us in our life and how he brought us up and how he brought us through, y'all. We all have ups and downs. And in Derek's life, I know Derek had some ups and downs. But I thank God for him because the little bit of time we spent together, he would always call me and say, we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. His, his team was the Washington Redskins, uh, the, the Washington Commanders, the new team. And he would always call me, huh? Yeah, yeah he would always call me and let me know when, when they beat the, uh, the Steelers. And so, you know, I just thank God for the little time we shared together, knowing that he had knew the Lord. And, and I, I just thank God for the family. I continue to pray strength for the family. I thank God for the for the things that, that me and him did together while we was here, while he was here on earth. Because life is short and uncertain, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Life is short and uncertain, so we can't waste time. We gotta make good use of our time. Yes, but I'm not here to preach today, but I'm just here to give remarks. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, being the youngest sibling and surrounded by all nieces for a very long time, Derek came to be. Derek was not only my nephew, but he was like the little brother I never had. Uh, we developed a tight bond. Derek grew up being quite precocious and very, very inquisitive. In fact, Derek was known to ask questions relentlessly. I mean the same questions over and over and over again. Mind you, he already knew the answers to. My dad, Moses, would be quite annoyed by Derek's questions. He had a zero tolerance, tolerance policy. Um, uh, I remember when I was in high school, I would try to impress whoever I was uh, dating at the time by taking, uh, taking them to Derek's little league games. Uh, Derek was a pitcher, and he was pretty, pretty good at it. Uh, he would always wear his uh, baseball cap to the side. Uh, when he noticed I was there, he flashed that infectious smile. One of the last conversations we had while, we was, while he was sick he told me, he said, he said, Unc, I'm not going to give up. I got too much to live for. Mm -hmm. Well, Derek never gave up. God just wanted him home. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. The Pastor Rivers. Thank you all the associate ministers on the pulpit, to the church, and to this family. I was um, Brother Pope's deacon. And actually, when I go over and think about it, we actually met before he came to charity. Uh, I remember that one time I helped him move, and we, we would have conversations and stuff like that. We would talk back and forth. And then he came to charity. And he came and uh, always back there smiling, was always smiling and stuff. But he, uh, he was a good fella, you know. He was a really good fella. And uh, one of the things that I do know about Derek Pope, that he didn't rattle the fence. He crossed over. Amen. He came to this church and he got baptized and he came as much as he can yeah. and, until his health stopped failing him. And I want to say this to, to the family. Yeah, he is a soldier. He was a soldier. And one of the things I want to also say to this family, who, Brother Webb, who is also the son, who is also on my ward, I'm also his deacon, and I'm pretty sure little DJ is going to be under my ward as well. Okay? So uh, that being said, Pastor Rivers, you know, this is a small world, a small world. Let as you take it, I knew his daughter, Sister Sade. And let me tell you, 
When I, I met her not on good terms, I tell you that. I met her when I was in the hospital, when she used to work at MUSC with my wife. And let me tell you something about that young lady. She took care of me. And one of the things that she told me when I got out the hospital the last time, she said, I don't ever want to see you back in here. I don't ever want to see you back. But she did a tremendous job taking care of me. And I just know in my heart that Brother Pope loved this family. There's no doubt in my mind. You know, I know he loved his family. He loved his children. He loved everybody who's associated with him in here. I know he loved you all. As well as he loved his church, he loved the pastor, he loved, he loved charity. He loved charity. So I bless God for the time that he had on this side of the world, you know, and um, that, you know, he's, 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 he's resting now. You know, his soul is gone. But um, he, he was a good brother. And I want to thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. And uh, God bless you. family of brother Derek Pope would like to thank each and every one of you for your calls, your prayers, the time you came by, and anything that you may have done for the family during their time of bereavement. <clears throat> Resolution in loving memory of brother Derek Pope. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways of God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he guides us with his eye and we'll follow till we die. For we'll understand it better by and by. We the members of Charity Missionary Baptist Church, along with our pastor, the Reverend Nelson B. Rivers III, our first lady, Carolyn S. Rivers, want to want the family to know that our hearts are with you as you gather to bid a Christian farewell to your loved one and our dear member, Brother Derek Pope. We have the promises of God that death, which men most fear, shall be to us the most blessed of experiences, dependent upon one's perfect trust in him. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, John 11 and 26. We thank thee for the life and the joy of Brother Pope. May his family and friends live together in peace and love and in hope, which is the forerunner of immortality. To Brother Derek Webb and the entire Pope family, we know your loss is deep, your sorrow is great. But we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. The Charity Missionary Baptist Church family pray God's peace and blessings upon you. Humbly submitted on, on this 23rd day of March, 2024, the members of Charity Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Nelson B. Rivers III, Pastor, Sister Vicki M. Stuckey, Church Clerk. Expressions of gratitude. We, the family of Derek Pope, are eternally grateful for all your acts of kindness and comfort shown to us during our time of bereavement. There is no sufficient amount of words that would equal the generosity you have shown us during this time. God bless. We thank you for all of your expressions. The family has been comforted and even encouraged and even found something to smile about. Amen. And may you continue to lift them in your prayers and your words. Yes. This journey is only beginning. Uh, don't leave them alone. Amen. They will need to hear from you next week like they heard from you last week. Thank you, thank you Sister Grant, for the resolution. 
I thank all these preachers for their participation and for their support of this family at this hour. We'll now have the song of preparation, and then we will come back with a word from the Lord about our brother, our friend, and our member, Brother Pope. In that order, please. Keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still the hope that lies within is reassured As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But I hear the storms don't cease. And if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Oh, though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still the hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared oh but he the storm don't cease ah. and if the wind keeps on blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in in the Lord, yeah, in the yeah. Lord, I realize yeah. that sometimes in this life we're gonna be torn by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor to keep me steadfast, unmovable, despite the tide. But I hear the storms don't cease. 
And just in case, I said just in case the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul, my soul's been anchored. Thank you, God. Get the Lord. I said, my, 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 my soul has been nagging. My soul has been nagging. My soul has been nagging. The billows may roll. The breakers may dash. I will not stray because he holds me fast. So dark the day clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because Jesus is mine. I said, my soul. I said, my, 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 my soul. My, 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 my soul. Oh, my soul has been nagging. 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 I said, my, 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 my soul has been nagging. My soul has been nagging. My soul has been nagging. My soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. The Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. Oh, to be confessional. If there's ever a time I want to sing, it's when Douglas Miller's song comes on. And then Charles Miller sings it and tells me, Shut up. And I said, Praise the Lord. Can we bless God for Minister Miller? Bishop Chavis, and our musicians, God bless, God keep. Family, we honor you and we thank you for allowing us the privilege to be with you at this hour. Celebrate this life worth celebration. Brother Derek Pope was a good member almost eight years ago when he joined charity and up until the pandemic he was a regular he sit back in almost the same spot I am amazed at how folk got their own places to sit in the church and they do it every Sunday and in fact the other thing is other folk know that's their seat and they didn't bother Pope that was his seat and he never had that face that looked like he smelled something bad being in church. He always had a smile on his face. Some folk come to church act like they're in prison, but he always, he always showed joy in the church. And for that, I am so grateful to Sister Sade and Brother Derek, Sister Essence, his grandchildren, including our own um, DJ, his sister and host of family. I'm impressed with these uncles who said so many wonderful things about Derek. And all my uncles are gone now. I don't think you get two of them to say the same thing about me the way they said about Derek. I, I'm impressed with that. I praise, praise God for that. Would you go with me now in prayer? Oh, Lord. Our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Thou art God, and beside you there is no other. The sweet heavenly dove with all thy quickening power fall fresh on me. Now, Lord, make me a vessel of thy love. 
instrument of our peace, and a herald of your good news. Remind me always, lest I forget, it is not my will, but thy will be done. Amen, amen, amen. Beloved, it is incumbent upon me to remind you that homegoing celebrations, funerals, services at the end of life are not for the dead, but for the living. Amen. Dr. King reminded us in his great eulogy of the four little girls who were slaughtered in Birmingham, Alabama by a terrorist bomb in 1963, that there's an amazing democracy in death. Amen. Kings die. Yeah. Beggars die. Amen. The rich die. Amen. And the poor die. The old and the young. Amen. They all die. Amen. The innocent and the guilty Amen. both die. Yeah. It is life's final common denominator. Amen. The one thing we all have in common as our lives will surely end. We'll never get out of this alive. Amen. None of us came to stay. Amen. Whether it's 10 years, 110 years, it will be over. Yeah. Yeah. The question then is, how did you live your life? So that when the end has come, you're not worried about where you're going. I bless God for Brother Derek Pope. I want to thank him for his witness in coming to church with regular commitment yeah, and with the right spirit. Yeah, so. I always thought when I would talk to him, yeah. this is a cool brother. Yeah. Didn't ever seem to have an attitude. He always had the same countenance. So we reminded that my duty today is do three things and I'll turn you loose. I am to honor the dead. Amen. I am to warn the living. Amen. And I'm to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. When I get to the part lifting up Jesus, y'all know it's almost over because it'll be done. <laughs> so I want to honor Derek Pope. Yeah. I want to warn those who are left behind. Yeah. Then I need to lift up Jesus. Amen. If you go with me to the word of God, I want to go to the gospel of John what is called the Farewell Discourse. It is in the last week of Jesus' life. And he had gathered at the Passover and he was giving his disciples some encouragement and reassurance that yes, I will leave, but I will not leave you alone. And he was telling them what to expect when he died and then would rise again. It's called the Farewell Discourse. In John chapter 14, this always read the first verse when he says, let not thy heart be troubled. But rarely do they get down to verse 22. And so I want to lift up these verses in the New Living Translation. As I honor this life lived well by Brother Pope. Verse 22 says, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, that was the one who denied him, who turned his back on him and turned him in. But the other disciple with that name yeah. said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, all who love me yeah. mm, will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. We will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. That bears repeating. Amen. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. Amen. And remember, my words are not my own. Amen. What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. Hallelujah. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you talk Jesus he said I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you but when the father sends the advocate as my representative that is the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and remind you of everything 
I have told you, I don't have time to preach the fact that the Holy Spirit's job is to remind you what Jesus already said. Yeah. Holy Spirit cannot make up anything new, only tell you what Jesus already said. Verse 27 is the preaching verse that said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid, says the word of God. Says the word of God. That, that 27th verse says, that song makes sense. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Uh, Brother Pope was paid the highest compliment a man can expect in the church. The greatest thing they can say about a brother in the church is this one thing. He was a good brother. He was a good brother. He was a cool brother, too. In fact, I would hasten to say Derek Pope chilled. He didn't seem to let stuff bother him. And I knew his life had been full before he got here in 2016, but I was always impressed that he didn't have some of the uptight attitude that, that some brothers bring to church. Some, some folk come to church, and they're so tight. You don't want to talk to them because they might cuss in public. All of us cuss in private, but some folk cuss in, in public. And I also wondered, every time I talked to him, he was so receptive and so cool. I, I finally it dawned on me, Sister Charday, as I was preparing this word. Toy, the word came to me, and the word says, Derek found it. That's, that's my word today. He found it. People spend a lifetime trying to find it. Never find it. Searching, spending millions of dollars. There are a lot of sorry, bad attitude millionaires in the world. Million dollars and a million dollars worth of trouble. Ain't got no peace. Because I've lived long enough to know that money will not guarantee you peace. But ain't nothing wrong with having it, because it will guarantee you no mess. It may not guarantee you peace, but you ain't got to have no mess. But I want to visit this word for the family and to all of you to know, he found it. Sister Helen Bailey, one of my favorite singers, does a song that she says she finally had a chance to talk to a friend she hadn't seen in years. And he was wondering, how did she have it so good after all she had been through? And the friend said, I want to find what you found. And what he was talking about was, you seem to have peace that passes all understanding. And when I found out about Derek Pope, he had peace. A lot of us are looking for it, but we can't find it because we're looking for peace in all the wrong places. You're not going to find peace in hell. You're not going to find peace in trouble. You're not going to find peace in some of your friends because some of your friends ain't got no peace. Some folk in your family can't give you peace. In fact, that's why some of y'all are choosing about who you hang out in your family. Because there's some members, I ain't talking about talking my mind. I got some members of my family, uh, if I hang out with them, I know it's going to be mess and drama and foolishness. So I exempt myself from foolishness. I exempt myself from them. How come you don't hang out over here because you're all over there? I'm trying to keep my sanity as long as I can. I made a promise to the Lord I'm not going to act like I used to so I can't hang out with who I used to. He was a cool brother. But I found out that he found it. As I was preparing for the word, I asked myself the question, how can you live in America and go through all we go through? And when it's all over, come to church and smile and sing a song, wave your hand in the air like you just don't care. That must be because you found peace. Peace is worth millions of dollars. But it's priceless. Folk got money, but they don't have peace. 
Folk got fame, but they don't have peace. Folk got family, houses, and land, but no peace. And then there are some folk who have none of that, but they got peace. Yeah. Brother Folk had peace. This text, this text from Jesus is telling us that he is going to leave us with a gift. Amen. Now, you know, the nature of a gift is that you cannot earn it. No. You cannot pay for it. In fact, you don't warrant it. That's why it's called a gift. If you have to earn the gift, that's a payment. That's not a gift. Amen. And if you have to do something to get the gift, that means you are in debt. But if they just give it to you, that's a gift. And God said through Jesus, Jesus said, I'm going to give you a gift. And the gift is called peace. Let's look at this text. This text says, you have to learn to love Jesus. A lot of folk claim they love the Lord. But we don't have any sign of that. Do you? you can't always be angry and love the Lord. You can't always have your face all twisted up like you smell something in you. If you love the Lord, we ought to have some evidence. If you love Jesus, we ought to have a sign. Verse 27, I mean, verse 23 says, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. That's a transactional sentence. That's a, love, do what I say. Love me, do what I say. My father will love them. That's the part not read enough. Bishop, they don't talk about this enough in the text. And we will come and make our home with each of them. He is saying, you don't have to die to have him come visit with you. If you love Jesus, he said, we will come and have a home with you. That ought to make you run around the room right now and say, you know what? I don't have to die to have God come with Jesus and hang out with me. But you have to learn to love Jesus. What I believe Brother Derek Pope did was learn to love Jesus. You can learn to love a woman. You can learn to love a man. In fact, they'll try to teach you how to love them. Then you keep flunking, then it start over. But if you don't love Jesus, you cannot love God. And he says you need to learn to love him. How do you love him? By doing what he says. The evidence that you love for Jesus is not how many times you come to church. It is not how much money you give in the church. The evidence is do you love him enough to do what he says? If you love him, you do what he says. Not what you want to do, what he tells you to do. There's a big difference. Then as my wife had taught me, in these 40 plus years we've been married, love requires some signs. If you say you love somebody, there needs to be some evidence. And the evidence cannot just be words on your lips. Sometimes it needs to be some tangible evidence. Some stuff you done gave up. Some things you have to pay for or earn to give away. If the only evidence you got of love is your talk, that's cheap. We need some evidence. Love requires some signs. Look at what Jesus says in the text, John 14. 24 to 26 says, anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. The reverse of that means if you obey me, you love me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the Father who what? Sent me. 25th verse says, I'm telling you these things now while I'm with you. What we get from Jesus is what he gave to the disciples who then gave it to the, got it from the Holy Spirit. That's why it lasted 2,000 years. He says, I am telling you these things now while I'm with you. 26 says, but when the Father sends the advocate as my, who? Mm, that's a whole word right there. The Holy Spirit is the advocate who represents Jesus. Talk somebody. That is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and remind you of everything I've told you. The Holy Spirit will never tell you something Jesus didn't say. 
When folk run around talking about that's the Holy Spirit making them talk, if Jesus doesn't say it, that ain't the Holy Spirit. I don't know what that is. That might be Mad Dog. That might be something else. That might be, that might be a nickel bag. That could be a dime one. I don't know what that is, but that ain't Jesus. If they're hollering the stuff that Jesus did not say in recorded word, that's not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is not authorized to speak out of turn. Everything the Holy Spirit says is in the word of God, written in the word of God, out of the mouth of Jesus. If you can't find it here, that's not the Holy Spirit. I ain't got time to teach all of it, but I got to preach some of it, though. Verse 26 says this, and I'll be done with this. He will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. So the last thing is this with Pope. And I want y'all to get this. I'm trying to put it down at grass level. I'm trying, to, trying to get it down where you can get this part. There's power <clears throat> in peace. There's power in peace. The reason some of us are able to be sane in an insane world because there's power in peace. The reason some folks seem to handle stuff better than others because they have found the power in peace. Look at the text, verse 27. And this is the powerful text. In fact, Reverend Daniels, the thing was so bad I had to go back and read it over and over again. I read this one verse all night because the verse spoke to me so loudly. The verse says, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind. And heart. Anybody know mind and heart go together? Don't you know that mind and heart go together? If my mind and my heart are at peace, y'all can't do me no wrong. You cannot upset me. I will not let you out. I've got this union of mind and heart. When peace comes to my heart, Lord knows it got to go to my mind. When I got peace in my mind, it must come from my heart. And when I got peace of mind and heart, talk to the hand. You ain't going to upset me today. You ain't going to do it. Keep on talking. I hit the play button. Peace of mind and heart. The second part of that says, and the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. Let not your heart be troubled, nor be afraid. What does he mean by that? If Jesus gave it to you, the world can't take it from you. And they can't do you no harm. I didn't know, a lot of songs the old people sang in church, I had to get grown to understand. I hadn't lived enough. I didn't understand what they meant, blessed assurance Jesus is mine, or oh, what a foretaste of you. I didn't know what that meant. I was too young. I thought the old folk talking. But I got around 35, 40. And then the burden got to be heavy. And then I realized that Marvin Gaye wasn't enough. I realized that James Brown got me on the good foot, but wasn't the right foot. And so I said, so as I got through it, I'm thinking, I need to go back to the old landmark. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He says, says, do it for me. When you start passing out blessings, do one for me. I, beloved, I want to end by this. Power in peace. You ever wonder why some folks seem to never get upset? Because they found it. So I know Brother Pope went through some trial and tribulation at the end. But in watching him and feeling that eminence out of him, I realized that no matter whether you can see or not, whether you can talk or not. When you found peace, it is so powerful that it changes everything around you. It changes your countenance. It changes your enemies and make them friends. It changes everything about you. There's power in peace. So I leave you peace, Jesus said, because he knows every day will not be sunshine. There will be trial, tribulation. There will be devils who come out of everywhere. But he's saying, if you get my peace, it will pass all understanding.
Don't be troubled. Nor be afraid. Derek Pope found it. He found peace. That's why he didn't have to worry about your opinion. He found peace. That's why he didn't have to worry about the drama. You know, family, all families have drama. Let me not speak about yours. Let me talk about mine. I got some folk in my family, when I see them on the call ID, my phone just won't pick up. I don't know. Just, my number, busy. I called you yesterday. I said, I know. And that's why I didn't answer, because it was you. Now, if one of them other cousins not answer, but see, if you call, I know I got some drama, and I think I have to have an option on drama. I should decide if I want drama or not. So if you call me in the last 10 times you call with drama, I got a pretty good suspicion this 11 time of drama. And so instead of taking the risk, I just don't answer. But I found out there's power and peace. So that's the question. Daddy, why now? So Sister Chardé, Brother Derek, Sister Essence, Brother DJ, told me I came by with the answer to the question. When death come, folk always wonder why now. And God wanted me to tell you as his representative, why not now? It's going to come. Why not now? What you really mean is you're not ready. And God said that I don't play ready. You need to get ready because death is coming. I'm trying to scare you. I'm just here to disclose fully the living arrangement God gave you. Person born of a woman will be of a few days, and one day will do what? Die. So the dash is your celebration. If you live in your dash, you ought to do better with your dash, because one day the dash is going to run into the end. So I want you to get right now convicted to live life in the dash, worthy of what God has given you. He's given you life, opportunity, and privilege. But let me answer the question. Why did Derek go? Why did Brother Pope leave now? I want to come by with a word from Jesus. And the word is, his room was ready. When your room is ready, you got to get up out of here. When your room is ready, you got to go. I know you want to stay. I want to stay too. But I got notice for 73 years. God done told me, don't you act shocked or surprised. I've been telling you the same thing for 73 years. When your time comes, you're going to leave here. I know you want to stay, but you can't stay. In fact, you ought not want to stay. It's hell down here. Where you're going is glory. But I come by to tell you, he left because his room was ready. Tell somebody his room was ready. His room was ready. Look at John 14, 1 through 3. The message, the paraphrase has it best. Everybody says it good, but nobody says it like this. Don't let this throw you. Chade don't let this throw you. Derek don't let this throw you. Essence don't let this throw you. Toy don't let this throw you. Don't let what God has allowed to happen throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me, this is Jesus talking. Amen. Then he said this, there is plenty of room for you. For who? For you in my father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? Jesus will not lie. He said, I'm going to get your room ready. And one day I'm going to come get you. And the third verse says, and if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. So the reason Derek left that day, because the angel came by and said, your room ready. And the good thing about the room that I'm talking about, you know, I was, I've been in a hotel last night. I'm going to be in one in a couple of days. So now every time I make a reservation, they want to know my credit card. And I can't tell them I ain't got a car because they don't care. I can't, I can't tell them I want to come because I'm Nelson Rivers. No, they don't frankly care. They need some assurance I'm going to pay my debt. And their assurance is called a credit card. Well, the assurance you got is the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus said that if you give your life to him, he's going to guarantee you a place over yonder in your room. And the good thing about your room, can't nobody go in your room but you. If you find somebody in your room, that means you got, you got the wrong room. And the good news is when Derek got to his room, 
Wasn't nobody in the room because the room was ready, had his name on the front door. I'm looking forward to when I get there. I know it's going to say my room. Why? Because my mama's picture going to be on the wall. My granddaddy's picture will be on the wall. They will be in the minute. I want you to understand that when your room get ready, you don't need to argue with the one who come to get you. You ought to be glad they're coming to get you because that means you got a room over in glory and the room belongs to you. If you want to know why the Derek Pope has to die, his room was ready. And when your room is ready, you got to go get into the room. Come on in the room, the old lady said. When they get your room ready. So your prayer is, Lord, make a room for me. And the Lord said, make a room for yourself. How do you do it? Give your life to Christ. Fall on the blood of God, bled on Calvary's cross. And if you give him all you got, he will have a room in glory for you. That's your shout. It came from Isaiah. Say when, when the old man talked about he had lost everything he had on the ship and found out that his children were dead. And when he finally got to see his wife, instead of crying and complaining, he wrote these words, when peace like a river yeah. attendeth my way. Yeah. When sorrow yeah. like sea billows roar, whatever yeah. my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. I believe Derek Pope would tell you if you can get on the same frequency, he said, don't cry for me. It's well with my soul. Because peace has come like a river. It's attended my way. He has his room over in glory, and it's his room. So while you're down here fretting, while you're down here fussing, while you're down here struggling, give up all the foolishness. Give up all the nonsense. Put a reservation down for a room over in glory that would have your name on the door. His room was ready. So my question, you got a room? Do you have a room? The good news is, you don't need MasterCard. You don't need American Express. You don't even need Cash App. But you can get a room over in glory. But it ain't free. It ain't free now. Your money don't mean jack over there. Money won't mean a thing. You can't impress them. You can't show enough Benjamins to impress them. Me, I use Lincolns. But you can't impress them. But I got good news. There's a way to get in the room. Somebody say hallelujah. That means no matter how much money I got, I can get in the room. Doesn't matter if I'm broke all day, every day. I can get in the room. Doesn't matter if y'all like me or hate me. I got a room. But I got to do something. The room is not free. It just don't cost any money. The room says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus and are willing to give your life to him and to say, I believe he died and he rose for a wretch like me and early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power for a wretch like me. Sounds simple to me. That if you want a room in glory, you got to give up something. But guess what you got to give up? Foolishness, hell raising, stupidity, nonsense, and about two or three hundred friends. But when you get the glory, you say, no, that's a good exchange. I done give up crazy. For Christ, that's a good deal. I don't give up foolishness forever in my word. I want you to know that you don't have to go through hell to get to heaven. Let it go. Give it up right now. All you're going through, you know it ain't worth it. Ducking and dodging, trying to hide from the man. Don't hide from the man. Give your life to the man. So I need to invite you to get a room. I need you to get your own room. Because you can't come in mine. Mine got my name on it. And it's paid for. Because one day, the preacher stood up and put his hand up. 
said, come down and give your life to Christ. I didn't plan to do it, but the spirit took over. And the spirit made one leg move, then the next leg move. Before I knew it, I was standing with the preacher. And he asked me these three questions, and I said, yes, yes. And we got to the end, I said, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you want to see Brother Pope, you're going to have to make a reservation. And your money is too funny for heaven. But guess what? Your own words, your own words, open the door. So before I'm done, I just need to show you how to do it. If you want to live so you can live again, give your life to Christ. I don't like to make this mysterious. You don't have to do it. You don't have to join charity. We don't have a membership campaign at church. We got a soul winning drive. We don't have a membership campaign. All we try to do is win souls. And when we win souls, we won. If you never come back, if we win your soul, we won. But I want you, everybody stand, including the family. Everybody stand where you are. Everybody stand where you are. Everybody's able to stand where you are. I got some unfinished business. If you have never given your life to Christ, this is your chance. And the good news is you don't have to join charity. But you do have to confess who he is to you. Every major transaction in your life has had terms and conditions. But these terms and conditions are very simple. If you believe in your heart, yeah. confess with your mouth yeah. that Jesus is the Son of God, Hallelujah. that he was sent to heaven, sent yeah. to earth from heaven yeah. to save a wretch like you. Yeah. If you give your life to him yeah. and you say it publicly and acknowledge who he is, he says you're saved. Yeah. That means you cannot be unsaved. Uh -huh. I ain't got time to preach about how many folks trying to take folk out of heaven no. who are paid to be in heaven. Amen. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. Amen. You cannot be unsaved. You. But you first got to be saved. You, so I invite you. Hallelujah. Is there one? If you've never given your life to Christ, come on. If we don't have a church home, we'll take you or we'll help you find one. We want you to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you want a room in glory, you have to make a decision. Is it the world or is it Jesus? It cannot be both. But the good news is Jesus took over the world. He's willing to take you over too. Is there one? Is there one? Come on now. We'll take you in right now, right now, right now. Maybe we haven't convinced you, so let me try an easier way. All eyes closed, heads bowed. And those who don't know him have never given your life to him. I want you to say this in your heart. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I'm willing to give up everything for you. Because you promised if I give up everything, you give it all back with more. If you believe that he's the son of God, that he died on that cross for you, got up early on Sunday morning for you, and he sits right now, right hand of God the Father, interceding for you every day, if you believe that in your heart and say amen, even if to say it in your spirit, you're saved. But what the Lord wants to know, if you bold enough to give your life to me, how come you're not bold enough to let the devil know? When you say it publicly, it's not for the church, it's for Satan. To hear him, you say, you don't, I don't belong to you. I got a room. Got my name on it. I just have to give up the devil to gain eternity. And all of the saints of God say, amen. 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 You may be seated in his presence. Brother Pope 
has a room in glory. And it's all his, it's all his, it's all his. So as the music ministry gives us a song to meditate on, I want to ask you right now, only you know the truth. If you've not given your life to Christ, let this song speak to you. When it's over, we'll be glad to fellowship with you, even at the end of service. It's more important that we get you than other people see it. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And perfect comes, comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the music in the meadows and the stream. You're the voices of my children my family and my own when I'm all alone your hand is there to hold oh, 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 oh. Jesus you are just for a moment the spirit has asked me to pray for a breakthrough to pray for a breakthrough so I'm going to be obedient and I ask that you will be obedient with me 
Father God, incline thine ear. Hear the prayer of your people. So, beloved, if you're holding somebody's hand, I want you to squeeze it just one time right now. And then say with the eyes closed, I love you. I love you. I'm praying nothing but the best for you. Whatever there is between us that is not of God, I bind it and throw it away right now. Whatever it is that is keeping us from loving on one another, I bind it in the name of the Most High God right now. That the Lord will bring union and communion to this family in the name that's above every name his name is Jesus our Christ and somebody say amen 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 tell him I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it Bless God. Thank you. Bishop Chavis, you were singing somebody. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank Minister Miller, you were singing somebody. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. That choir is a bunch of singing somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Preacher asked one time, how can you be a pastor and can't sing? I said, I ain't got to. Got a church full of singing people. My job is to preach the word. Come now to have our committal. Funeral home will direct us our fine friends at Low Country Mortuary. We thank them. Sister Armstrong and our brother beloved. Make sure you tell Brother Cook that I call his name. Sade, you might not know Cookley well enough, but if he was there, he'd be crying right about here. Yes. <laughs> He's known to cry at funerals. Yes, he does. He's especially at charity. We try to make him cry. <laughs> not out of pain, but out of joy, because he don't hear much music where he go to church. So we, <laughs> so we, we sang and played music over here. So, <laughs> preachers, if you join me down front, we're going to have a uh, um, thank you. The funeral home will help us go through the service of committal. The deacons, would you join us as well? Mass Reverend, can you, Minister, can you grab the mic? Oh, okay. Thank you, Trustee. Mass Reverend Daniels will give us a prayer. Then we'll proceed to be led by the funeral home in the service of committal. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory, God. Father, for all that you've done in our lives. Lord, even at this time, Father God, we thank you what you are doing even in the lives of your children. Father God, your word in Romans says, what can separate us from the mm. love of God? Not even death can separate us from your love. So we thank you for your love. God, be with this family in the coming days. Continue to keep them in the hall of Father in your name. We'd be so ever careful to give you glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Four. As it's pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our deceased brother. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, 
right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, saith the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. After the service is over, are we processing out? I know there's no burial afterwards, so we're staying here. Beloved, on behalf of the Charity Missionary Baptist Church, church family, I want you to know that Derek Pope was our member. He was not just a member, he was a good member. But he was a member who found what you've been looking for. He found peace. If you don't have it, do what he did. Exchange hell for glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look to the Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Even amen. Why don't you clap your hands for Dr. Rivers today? Amen. amen. Clap your hands for the Charity Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. We thank them for their hospitality and opening their doors. This does conclude the services for that of our dearly departed brother Derek Pope. We will review his remains here in the chancel of the church. We do ask that you remain seated until directed by a funeral director or an usher. On the days to come, we ask that you continue to pray for this family. For it's in the days to come, they're going to need a phone call. They're going to need a memory to help them along this tedious journey. On behalf of Mr. Coakley A. Hilton and the Low Country Mortuary, we do thank you for entrusting your services with us. And we pray that if ever there are times that you need us, we're just a phone call away. We ask that uh, you continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand, uh, for it's him that is the only one that can see you through. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Which way the family wants to do it? When we all see we will see.